Hello Internet and welcome to a new uh, playthrough of a uh, game that I haven't played yet, it's called Plague Gazer, Couriers of Darkness. No idea what that is, I only know that it's, an, uh, that it's a new role-playing game, so let's start. So, okay, this looks like a party creation screen. You can choose a character below and customize it or create one from scratch. Yes, I'm going to create my own character. Nice art. I like this. Okay. Okay. Here is our character. Okay. So let's read about races. Uh, humans. Humans were once a united tribe that roamed year in gold for generations. The dark goddess of greed, Sur Nilsa, infected their hearts slowly with greed, avarice and jealousy. The single tribe of a man became many as they turned on one another. They worked for resources and land, forgetting their roots. Their bonds were broken and their old alliances splintered. Humans come in many different shapes and colors and can be found all over a year ago. They are natural farmers working the land as an artist works day clay. Human versatility means that they can fill virtually any role. Okay. Okay. What about their statistics? Can be any cast, minus one, maximum supernatural. Don't know what that is. Okay, uh, next race, the dwarf. Think about the dwarves. The, the devil god Rotkor was angry over the creation of the elves and the threat they represented to his plans to throw the world into darkness. He sent an, an incubus to impregnate elven woman in an effort to steal the essence uh, that lie within their wombs. The elven mothers despaired, but the grey green goddess told her daughters to seek the first waters of year ago. They did so, but were trapped in a stone cavern when rot cores and demons destroyed them. The children survived the attack, but their mothers did die. Men in the mountains found the babes and raised them as their own. But the elven Progeny were stunted and hairy. The children, now known as dwarves, grew and prospered, sharing the love of nature from their elven parents, but began to exhibit a preference for the depths of the world. Okay. Dwarves are very materialistic but have a strong connection to clan and family. They are stout and powerfully built, well settled, settled, suited to exploring the natural tunnels that form deep. Okay, what's their stats? Can it be necromancer? Can it be winter mage? Can it be spellweaver? Can it be convoker? Can it be druid? Can it be templar? Can it be ranger? Can it be swindler? Okay, can wield a war clubs and hammers regardless of class? Okay, plus one to maximum physic, minus two to maximum charisma, minus one to maximum supernatural. Plus 50% with war clubs and hammers, okay. Plus 12% damage with battle axes, okay. Plus 9% damage with slings and festivals. Interesting, okay. What do we have next? Okay, El Elven Race. Uh, as the drives of men fell to greed and the world was spoiled, the green goddess swept. The king god allowed Tilindia to select a few tribes of men, those least affected by greed to be her vessels in Isilmerald. Tilindia chose eleven tribes of men to claim as her own. Those eleven tribes were come to be known as the elves as time passed. Elves share a special connection with nature, feeling an inherent connection to all natural things. Their generations apart from men 
have changed them physically, the narrow frames allow them to move faster and quieter than men. Their ears grew pointed to be to better pick out distant or small sounds. They also tend to be xenophobic and haughty towards the other races due to their chosen status imparted by the deer. Okay. Can be shaman, can be templar, okay. Plus one to maximum dexterity, minus two to maximum physique, plus sixty percent damage with bows and arrows. Okay. And next one. What's this? Fell the field the cock. What is this? The field the cock. Of Feldigog were once elven tribes who lived close to the north. The demigod Degrel Mir grew jealous over the love of the elves showed for Tindia and imprisoned a number of elven tribes in the snowy cold north. He would forge his own race and command them as he saw fit, but the elves were first a creation of the god king and the queen goddess. And as they changed to survive the north, they also realized that the strength they would need to be free. Targamir eventually realized his mistake and allowed his creations to rule themselves and commanded them to form six tribes, drawing from the strength granted by their own cold imprisonment and their god and goddess. They rebelled against their demigod. Okay. Fildigog are similar to elves but much paler. They are resistant to hard environments who most would consider unreal. They are rarely seen outside of their snowy snowy northern homelands and most other races are very distrustful of them. Okay. So what are the results? Okay, can it be necromancer, can it be shaman, can it be templar? Plus one to maximum intelligence, plus minus one to maximum charisma, minus one to maximum physique, uh, plus one to maximum supernature, okay. Looks like a mi mixture of... Uh, uh, looks like a mixture of everything, like uh, humans and some spellcasters. We have then we have reload. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, travelers, traders, and alchemists from the Eastern Empires. The reload are a child race of a powerful genie called Eleanor Eater. Their whole world is shrouded in mystery, so few outside the reload themselves know much about them. What is known is that they are seekers of pleasure and ex experience, uh, consumer, consumer traders and nomadic caravaners. Rilo are large, physically imposing race who bear a passing resemblance to elephants. They, they issue religion and favor displays of wealth. They have a natural talent for breathing and drying. Okay. Can be ranger, can be templar, can be white mage. Plus two to maximum physique, minus two to maximum dexterity. Okay. So I think I should pick a race. I'm going to play the dwarf. Okay. So let's proceed to the next step. Now we have to pick a class. So let's see what classes do we have available. We have a fighter class. Fighters are trained to be ready for anything. They are a very versatile profession and are the most common of all material professions. Fighters are proficient with all weapons, armor making them deadly and well prepared. We have a cleric. Alright, another fighter, okay. We have a Highlander, that's it. Highlanders are hardy and strong warriors. Their profession originating in the harsh north, strong warriors, to 
tough enough to resist the elements. They prefer stick armor as it doesn't restrict their movement and helps them blend into natural environments. While they can pick up and use any weapon, they prefer the raw and crushing power of clubs and hammers. Looks like a barbarian to me, okay. Let's see about the cleric class. Uh, clerics are priests of faith who have taken up arms to better serve their god. While not as combat oriented as the Templars, they can serve in other ways. Their faith to a deity allows them to build the magical powers that can help their team to or hurt their foes. They are first and foremost servants to their gods and their harness their faith to the good of their religion. Shamans are beings of faith who channel their power in an unusual manner. They attempt to connect with their deity on a spiritual level and can communicate with spirits and other servants of their world. Shamans have access to a kind of magic that is not easily understood by wizards or priests. They use an ancient magic and their ability to travel with their physical souls to further their communion their god is to confuse more short-sighted magical pr practitioners. Okay. And we have a Thief class. In a world infested with greed, the Thief is, has become much more common. Their skill set is diverse and they can function as a common food pet or royal spies. They prefer sub church and misdirection to open conflicts. Their ability to steal or plant items remain undetected and create all manner of powders makes them a deadly and unpredictable for in or out of combat. Okay. So my main character is going to be a fighter class. What does it mean and more? Ah, so it's like a multi-class, okay? You can choose up to, to two additional classes for your character. All have a higher amount of experience is needed to for advancing the character. Gain success to a wider range of skills and abilities accomplished for advanced players. I will tell advanced players are not going to exist. So stars. Can wear any physical armor, can wield any weapon, okay? Just to physique, okay? Resistance to strain and pain. Resistance to pulse and blow. Alright. So let's proceed. Uh, attributes. Okay. Physique. Physique always. Physique displays a character's overall physical build and state. A character's value in physique modifies their damage dealt with physical attacks, their maximum health value, their ability to evade incoming attacks through blocking, and their carrying capacity. Interesting, so this will be my main stat, I suppose. What about the dexterity? Dexterity displays a character's agility. A character's value in dexterity modifies their aim and accuracy value, and their chance to evade attacks through dodging and parrying attacks. Okay. What about intelligence? Intelligence displays a character's ability to think, plan, and use logic in different situations. A character's value in intelligence modifies their efficiency their efficiency in with various, various spells and skills that depend on one's mental abilities to be performed. So we can notice this stuff. Focus. Focus displays a character's overall mental strength and resonance. A character's value in focus modifies their aim and accuracy value, their ability to evade coming attacks through dodging and blocking their efficiency with spells. Logic and blocking. Interesting. Charisma. Charisma displays a character's natural aptitude to appeal, attract and influence others. Charisma modifies a character's bargain and precision skill and various class skills. Okay. And what is what's the last one? Supernatural displays a feature of characters that elevates them above ordinary creatures. The value of supernatural increases a character's resistance values against various forms of 
damage and enables further special abilities. Interesting. Okay, the resistance weapons plus various forms of damage. Okay. Uh, points to the three groups. 23. Okay. Okay, nine. So I can't go lower than four. Okay. So I don't see any endurance. Start, so I'm going to dump most of my stats into physique. Ah, and I cannot go above 15, okay. Alright, um, so perhaps dexterity, so I will be able to hit more often. Okay, 14 dexterity. And I read somewhere that this focus. Modifies their aim and accuracy value. Okay. Okay, going to spend some spots here. Okay. Let's proceed. Alright. Skills and spells. Um, Alright, what do we have here? Bargain and persuasion. Learning and research, brewing and drying, what about bargaining and persuasion. Offer the ability to manipulate characters of fear and go to do your bidding. Points in this skill will help you to reach favorable prices for vendors that unlock small options in dialogues affected by charisma and intelligence. Okay. What is the learning and research? Offers the ability to read various text scrolls and recipes. Scrolls can be caused, cast or recorded into spell books. Uh, recipes can be learned and added to compendium. Affected by intelligence focus and, modif and focus modifiers. Okay. What about this? Brewing and drying. Offers the ability to craft potions and powders from various ingredients collected throughout the year ago. Potions can mostly be consumed for a set of positive effects or healing, while powders can be thrown at or planted on enemies for a set of negative effects or damage. Crafting potions and powders from advanced ingredients or at higher heat levels will require investing some points into this skill. Affected by intelligence, dexterity, focus, and focus modifiers. Okay. I'm not sure if I need this at all, maybe bargain skill. Yeah, yes, bargain skill. Okay, class specific skills. What do we have here? Seasoned warrior enables additional dialogue choices aimed around warriors besides aiding choices. It increases the bargain and precision score when, when in dialogue with other soldiers, sucks, mercenaries, and bodyguards. Affected by charisma, physique, and physique modifiers. Okay. Outdoor survival, the character becomes more capable at fending for themselves and their allies in the wilderness, Increase health regained, increases health regained while resting for adjusted outdoors, locations for all party members, multiply, multiple characters can take this skill to increase its effect, affected by physique, focus, okay. Toward the next in command company offers the ability to become a leader of the party. The commander of the group can designate various battlefield tactics to follow, which results in a group fight bonuses. New tactics become available as the leader advances. The bonuses gained remain active until another tactic is selected before the group causes to rest. A group can only have one commander at a time, affected by charisma, physique, and physical requires. Okay, this is an interesting skill again. Okay. Cross locks and doors. Offers the ability to open locked containers and doors uh, the harsh way. This rather brutish way of opening them requires far less of fine than a lockpick and is prone to making noise that might attract unwanted attention from the surroundings. More effective against low level locks. Forcing the lock successfully offers a small amount of experience. Okay. Affected by physical dexterity and dexterity modifiers. I think I'm going to invest into combat company. Yes. Uh, okay, next.
next weapon specialization bows and arrows all right defines a character like with bows and arrows bows and arrows increases the user's aim and accuracy with them sure bows are fast weapons but when bows are average speed arrows mostly deal stepping damage all right slings yeah, we know what slings do. Slings and twist spells, yes. Throwing weapons, okay. More clubs and hammers. That's what large blades are. Mm. Defines characters up to long swords and great swords, okay. So, no shield spell is civilization, right? Space, Pills and Halvers, Battle Axis. Um, I'm going to invest into, mm, into World Clubs and Halvers with this character. Yes. Alright. Um, I think that's it. Yes. Let's proceed. Wait, wait. Yes, appearance. So here we can pick a character's portrait. Let's find the dwarf. Right. Yeah, not bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is not bad. Okay, major color default, minor panel color default. Okay, I have all possible combinations here. We have parallel red, your style, little dots. Okay, what kind of your style can I pick? Oh, not bad, I like this. Okay. Visual hair, maybe other. Not bad, I like the long one. Okay. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, name and voice type name. Oh, there is a name generator. Let's try one. Coolly thief. Oh, Atli. I like I like this one. I like Atli. Voice. Uh, let's play this one. Uh, scoundrel. Hmm. Yeah? It's nice to be needed. Why not? Alright, let's try another brute. What? Where's the will? Yeah. Where's the fight? Huh. Alright, I will fix this one. Um, next. Finalize. Yes. 